Hi everyone, and welcome to Bob's Wood Stuff. Today I'm going to show you how I made this dice box that holds 13 dice, which is a pretty good amount for D&D. The top slides on with a sliding dovetail and is held in place with a magnet so that it doesn't open up when it's in your bag. I've included plans in the description of this video so that you can make your own. Let's go to the shop. I'm going to rip this piece into two pieces that are one and three eighths inches tall. And that gives me enough depth to put the Forstner bit in and accommodate each of the dice. I'm gonna mark off six inch sections on this board so I know where the different dice vaults start and stop and I can place my holes accordingly on the drill press. I'm going to chuck a one inch drill bit into my drill press. My chuck key has a magnet on it, so it's always handy. I can just stick it anywhere on the drill. But I'm gonna raise the table up to just below the drill bit. And adjust my depth stop so that the point is just above the bottom of the block of wood. I later added my shop vac for some dust collection while I'm drilling all these holes. About halfway through drilling all of the holes, I noticed that the edges were really messy and didn't look very good. So I decided to sharpen my force snare bit. On the left you can see the before sharpening and on the right you can see after sharpening. It made much cleaner holes afterwards. Now I'm going to flatten the top of these using my hand plane. If you put it through a jointer and a planer already, you don't have to do this, but I did not put it through a jointer or a planer. So I want this part totally flat before I take it to the router table. It appears to be flat. First thing I want to do is swap out my router table bit for a dovetail bit and place this piece of plywood on top of the whole router table. What this will do is create a flat continuous surface. There's a hole for the bit and there's also a hole for the adjuster. Now I want to determine how high to put the bit, and I'll do that by just placing my piece of wood against it. Because I know that the depth of my mortise is one inch, I need to make sure that there's space between the bit and the bottom of the mortise, and that is where the dice will fit. Always use these things. They're very safe, and it keeps everything controlled. You can see I have a nice edge, and this is where the top is going to slide in. I'll move the fence and get rid of all the center material. Now I need to adjust the fence on my router table using the same bit at the same height so that I can just knock off the very edges of this top piece and then test it against this and then move the fence and then keep inching it so that eventually the bottom profile of this fits inside this gap and it's a big sliding dovetail. You can see that I still have quite a ways to go, so I'll just keep knocking the fence over slightly until this fits. At this point, the top fits pretty well, so I'm gonna cut the boxes into individual pieces and then also the top, and then I'll custom fit each one. So in order to fill some of these holes that were left by the brad tip on the Forstner bit, I'm going to mix some plaster of Paris and just spread it in there and fill those holes. If you want to not do that, you can always grind off the tip of your Forstner bit and it'll still work fine in a drill press. Let's put a little bit of plaster of Paris there. And you want to make sure to mix it well. You don't want any dry pockets in there.
So I want to paint the whole inside part of these boxes. I'm going to use Tight Bond 1 because I want it very thick and plasticky. And then I'm going to use acrylic paint mixed in with it so that it's dark colored. So here I've got my boxes. I've sanded down the corners and uh, chamfered the edges with a block plane. The inside concerned me a little bit after painting this part. This uh, bottom piece expanded so much that the tops didn't fit anymore. They were very loose. You can see how the magnet snaps it to the right place. The magnet should prevent it from opening when it's in a bag or something like that. I sanded it to 220 grit. Now I'm going to apply some tongue oil finish. So this was a really great project. I ended up making a few for friends and one for myself. I hope that you have fun making it as well, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you soon.